We sure as hell knew Miz wasn't gonna win. I don't understand if Jericho was gonna be out for a week or two, but he came back from not being able to compete to participating in a battle royal the next night. Makes as much sense as a redneck reviewing hentai. Stupid soundboard! Greetings, salutations, and all around how the hell are you? My name is Charlie Callahan, and this is Call It What You Like, the show that is literally shrinking before my very eyes. But that's not important. What is is that people care enough to provide me with their entertaining segments for this little experiment? Like this excellent producer, from the Agony Booth, it's Mr. Mendo! Okay. You can do it. This has always been your dream. You're gonna make this video, you're gonna get on the show, and it's gonna be awesome. Okay. Who the hell do I call? Ah, uh, yeah, uh, Kevin, yeah. <laughs> he is going to freak! Uh, yes, this is Mr. Lyons at the zoo. No, this is Mr. Lyons from the zoo. Look, it's not me, goddammit. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I'm gonna call you back. <clears throat> yes, I'm calling from the bank. No, I, I don't think you left your shoes here last time it was... Well, I can look, but I... Yeah, hi, this is Mr. Stevens from the mayor's office. I... Yeah, hold on, I have another call. Uh, yeah, hi, this is Mr. Stevens from the mayor's office. Uh... Um... Do you have a minute to talk about Jesus? Well, I was busy last Sunday, I mean... Wait... Can you even do that over the phone? Huh, well, I guess you can. Uh, well then, uh, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Hey, this is Mendo. Damn it. I regret to inform you that there is a mad bra thief on the loose, but he's only stealing a certain size, so I'm gonna have to, you're gonna have to tell me what, what size you wear, this, so I can cross you off my list. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk to Dad. Hello, Mr. Smahavich? Uh, yes, this is your... Uh, daughter. Fuck. Hey, do you have Prince Albert in a can? You do? Well, you'd better let him out, then. Yes, I did it! <laughs> Wait, what? Hello? Well, I hardly see how this counts as an abuse of emergency services. I... I see. Well, look, I don't care if it is Ash Wednesday. Jokes about the Pope are always funny. Dude, I don't even see what you're so upset about. That was like three years ago. I mean, um, is Al there? Last name, Kaholic? Oh, God. Yeah, is this the, uh, Daughters of the American Revolution? Well, I've been up all night thinking about you. Naked. Really? No, I don't think I'm doing anything on Tuesday night. Um, I don't think I'm very good at this. It's time for Mikey's Fun Time Show. Now, throughout human history, man has passed down his epic tales from generation to generation. This next segment is no exception. Nathan P. Fussbudget here, and we are back with story time as told by Nathan P. Fussbudget. Today we are telling the story of the famous Disney movie The Lion King. Now once upon a time there was a lion named Sinbad. Sinbad was a lion guy who lived in the futuristic suburb of San Francisco Rock. 
One day, Sinbad went to see his lady guy named Nobunala. One day, Sinbad and Nobunala decided that they are going to check out an elephant rave. They get there, and then they sang some songs. The first song is a total disaster because all of the animals fall down and die of asphyxiation. This allows the villain, whose name is Scarface, to spring his trap and kill Sinbad's father. Scarface then tells Sinbad that the ridiculous song and dance routine is what killed Sinbad's father. Feeling upset, Sinbad runs away to Hakuna Matardenville with Trombone and Puma. Trombone and Puma tell Sinbad that he should forget everything and they invoke a time warp. So Sinbad does the time warp again and turns into Ferris Bueller. Upon turning into Ferris Bueller, Nobunala finds him and tells him that Scarface has taken over San Francisco. Sinbad decides that he is going to go back and stop the evil Scarface from having his hyenas infestate San Francisco. So Sinbad, Trombone, Puma, no and Nobunala all do the smart thing and deal with an extermination the way any sensible animal kingdom would. They hired some professional exterminators. So they called the Orchid Man and they sprayed all of the hyenas. Sinbad then goes to Scarface to have the final confrontation. Up on top of the highest pride rock in all of the place, they have their battle. Scarface throws some cocaine at Sinbad, but he dodges it and throws Scarface into some fire. Now that Scarface is dead, Sinbad takes his rightful place on top of the pride rock. Then he makes the lion sexy time with Nobunala and they pump out a child, contributing to the problem with this country. Too many directed DVD Disney movies. The moral of this story, stop having children. And now, Charlie's question of the week. Do androids dream of electric sheep? And this has been Charlie's. Question of the week. Have you ever wondered what your favorite fictional characters are really like? No? No. Well, I... Hate has made you powerful. Now come, take your father's place at my side. You know, Grandpa, if you just want me to sit by you, you could ask normally. Grandpa, could you tell me a story? Well, I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Have you ever heard the tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise? It was said that he could use the Force to even create life. But... But... What? What do you mean there's no more tapioca pudding? Why, that makes me so mad I could just... Ah, ah, my arthritis. Everything that has transpired has done so according to my design. Your friends up there on the Sanctuary Moon are walking into a trap, as is your rebel fleet. It was I who allowed the Alliance for the location of the Shield Generator. It is quite safe from your pitiful little band. An entire legion of my best troops await them. Oh, I'm afraid the Deflector Shield will be quite operational when your friends arrive. Ah, oh, crap. Mom, get the pills. Grandpa's making crazy talk again. Well, this episode's almost done. Perfect time to take a break. He has over 500 contacts in his phone. All from the phone book. His walls are filled with restraining orders from women he glanced at. He can cure insomnia just by opening his mouth. He is the least interesting man in the world. I don't always drink, but when I do, I prefer a glass of triple filtered tap water. Stay thirsty, my friend. Hello? Hello? This thing on? Okay, I don't have very much time. I was told to give you this, so, um, yeah. Here it is. We've had boring old normal vision television.
Vision, Intellivision, Smellovision, and now Geek Vision. You won't believe your eyes. Just listen to this satisfied customer. Ever since Geek Vision, girls have liked me. I may have even got one to hold my hand, but I'll never tell. Well, it seems like you're quite the ladies' man, Jimmy. The secret lies with groundbreaking technology from the spacemen from Mars. Geek Vision will help you defeat communism for America. And that's why you should get Geek Vision. You said it, Jimmy. See, wasn't that just great? I... I gotta go. And that'll about do it for this episode. So once again, I am Charlie Callahan, and if this didn't live up to your expectations, then call it what you like. See you next time. Play us out, Jess! Oh, oh.